man. He had to wake me up right before the shot. As quickly as I was so abruptly awakened back into reality, my mind starts to drift back into the Whitetail Woods. This trip was truly a special bow hunting adventure. From the very beginning, bow hunting has been etched deep into our DNA. We know what it means to have the fire of archery burning inside. We know the heart-pounding anticipation of waiting for that monster buck. We share the breathtaking excitement when we hear elk bugles in the mountains. We're a band of brothers and sisters who share the passion. Just like you, it drives us. We're born to bow hunt. Kansas is home to some of the best whitetail hunting in the country, and its bow hunting opportunities are rated at the top of the list for many archers. Archers that are looking to take home a huge trophy whitetail. And they've joined up with the outfitter and professional whitetail guide, David Henning, to put them in front of huge bucks. David knows where the big guys live and how to take them. He owns and operates Kansas Monsters Guides and Outfitters in South Central Kansas, a real hotspot for huge whitetails. Show host Heath Painter is no stranger to this area of Kansas and to Kansas Monsters. Heath has hunted with David in the past, and David put Heath on an awesome buck during rifle season. On a cold and chilly morning, Heath took the buck he was looking for. This year, the SNA team has archery equipment in their hands and hope to put their tag on some giant white-tailed bucks. Bow hunting is truly a challenge. Being able to get within a wild animal safety zone is very difficult. Then add in the cunningness of a mature white-tailed buck and you've just doubled your trouble. When we choose a location to go after and chase big bucks, one of the best states is Kansas. Kansas is notorious for growing the big bucks. Heath Painter is in the stand. David has him in a pinch point between feeding and bedding. This early morning hunt has Heath in the right spot. This buck is lucky. Heath is letting this guy live to grow another year. The bucks are on the move. They're feeling the rut in the air. Before the break, show host Heath Painter had a small buck chasing does. Heath passes on this buck. The rut is definitely in the air. One of the best times to hunt big monster mature bucks is right in a pre-rut or right before the rut starts to happen. During this time, I'm not hunting the scrapes. I'm not hunting the rubs. There's one thing a big buck's looking for. He's looking for does. He wants to find the hot does, and that's what I'm after. If I hunt the does, I hunt the food source the does are in, it's just a matter of time before a big buck, before the Mac Daddy starts cruising through, and then I'm gonna be there, waiting on him. Here in Kansas, you know, you can expect to take home a, a buck of a lifetime. Um, you know, we have bucks that average, you know, 140s, 160s. Uh, and, and that occasional, you know, monster Boone and Crockett. So, um, when hunting here in Kansas, you know, that's what the, that's what you come here for. You come here to kill big bucks. Team member Rick Robinson is also into the action. He's only about a mile from where Heath is seeing all the movement. Rick has placed a decoy 20 yards from the stand, and he's using scent to entice a buck. Decoying in Kansas can be very productive during the right time of year. A buck must be in the right mood. During the pre-rut stage in the deer woods, a hunter must concentrate on travel corridors and the core doe movements. Either bucks will be roaming scent checking, or they'll be harassing the doe units searching for Mrs. Wright. More times than not, the areas will produce the results a bow hunter is looking for. There's a couple different factors that you need to consider when killing big bucks. First and foremost, you gotta have the deer there to shoot. Then got to be the right time of the year. The deer have to be comfortable with moving. Right pre-rut, they're going to be searching. They're going to be looking for the does. They're going to be moving through the areas during shootable daylight hours.
In order to grow big bucks, you have to be able to allow them to get to a mature level, to get the age that they need to grow those thick, heavy, massive horns. And out here in Kansas, I promise you, they're growing the big bucks. Why? They have the thick cover that allow these big bucks to vanish. They have CRP fields. I mean, thousands of acres of CRP fields that allow these bucks to get in and practically bed down anywhere and they vanish. Then they have these little creek bottoms. Man, they're thick and they're woolly. In just a matter of a couple steps and these deer can disappear from a hunter. But the neat thing about this is Kansas has the, the funnels and the food sources that you need as a bow hunter to key in on these deer. If you get close enough to the bedding area to allow these deer to feel comfortable and still operate in their normal everyday activities, but if you get close enough, you're gonna have a really good chance, whether or not it's through a funnel or in a food source, that these big mature bucks are gonna come out and give you an opportunity. Take your deer hunting to the next level. The Arrow Hunter Tree Saddle from New Tribe delivers mobility, comfort, and above all, the safety that today's hunters demand. The mobility to move around the tree and be ready when game approaches from any direction. The comfort to hunt all day. And the safety to be sure you cannot fall out of a tree if used correctly. Lightweight, versatile, and made in America. The Arrow Hunter Tree Saddle from New Tribe. Find out more at arrowhunter.us. We're bow hunting whitetails out in Kansas with David Hanning's Kansas Monsters Guide and Outfitters. Keith Powell loves to hunt whitetails, and he loves to bow hunt. I tell you, bow hunting to me is, is, is a lot of fun. I'm not what you call a die-hard bow hunter where that's all I do is bow hunt. I like to hunt with a rifle and, and, and everything. So when I put down my rifle and I pick my bow up, it's totally different. Now you got to get these animals in really close and you gotta be really quiet, and so the whole game plan changes. So it's, it's a challenge for me, it's exciting to do something different. The area we're taking Keith into is a prime rut location. It's a, it's a grove of cottonwoods that runs about a half mile, but it's only um, maybe 100 yards wide. It, it's a perfect travel corridor for these bucks cruising. Um, we've got a swamp to the north or a wetlands and, and a big pasture in the river to the south, and, and these bucks will funnel into this cottonwood uh, and we call it the cottonwoods for that reason. Um, it's just, it's hundreds of cottonwoods mixed in with little cedars. It just provides perfect cover. And uh, there's several main trails that run through um, where these bucks will, will cruise through looking for bedded does during the rut. And um, rattling and, and calling really works excellent. Keith hits the horns, hoping to call in a mature buck. On crisp, cool mornings, rattling can be heard from a long way. Cruising bucks within range will hear the challenge. And if you catch the right buck in the mood, he'll be headed your way. November 2nd, the rut's just about a week away. These deer are starting to cruise, and they're, and they're curious, and they're going to be coming to horns, they're going to be coming to grunts, and so that's what we did. We laid down this rattling sequence. We thought we heard something coming in, so I put the horns down, and I was trying to look, but we never got our eyes on it. So we went back to just a looking, and, and about five minutes later, I guess, we, we looked up, and actually, David saw the, saw the buck coming across the field. And because where he was at, it was, a, like I said, it was a swamp, the grass was really high. And all you could see was the neck up, and all you could see these towering tines coming to the grass. So he looked at me, big buck, big buck. So I'll get my binoculars up, I look at him, I see he's a big buck, and he's coming at us, but he's kind of coming sideways to us. So I let out one grunt, and sure enough, it just turns and he comes on a rope right to us. Well, where we're set up, we're set up where we can, there's a fence line on one side of us and there's a heavy travel corridor on the other side of us. Well, the buck walks up to the fence. The fence is 40, 42 yards away. I arranged it before we got in. So the buck's 42 yards away on the other side of the fence and he hangs up and he walks up and down the fence. And so what I do, every time he starts to take a step or every time he starts to move, I give him a grunt just to let him know, hey, I'm still over here. And I knew he wanted to come, but I knew he didn't want to jump that fence either. So he stood there forever. It seemed eternity. That buck just stood there on the fence. And I would grunt. And then he would try to wind us. He would stick his nose way up in the air. 
way stretch his old neck out, try to wind us. And the good thing for us is the wind was actually hitting us in the back and blowing right over him. But I think because it was so early in the morning, the thermals were carrying us right over him. He could not smell us. So that was a blessing in our favor there. So the buck knows something's not right. He, he's not spooked, but he just doesn't feel right. So he turns to walk away. He walks about 10 yards and he stops. I still don't have a shot. I'm thinking to myself, I may or may not get a shot here. I don't know. It's thick. There's only a few spots that I might get a shot. Well, as luck would have it, he turns to the right and walks about another six to eight yards and stops. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Bow hunting a mature whitetail bug is a challenge. Being able to close the distance for an archery shot is sometimes nearly impossible. Before the break, SMA's Keith Powell rattled in a nice eight point. This weary buck is well within range, but the heavy branches are making getting an arrow to the buck tough. Keith is looking for an opening. Let's join back in with Keith and his eight point out in Kansas. So the buck stops. He's got, I got a quarter and away shot. So I'll take my shot. I tell you what, that's a great shot. Anytime you can shoot an animal, quartering away, you always want to aim for that off his shoulder. And that's exactly what we did. I let it go, it hits him, it hammers him. The buck takes five or six steps, he runs into the fence, he jumps the fence, and he takes he runs about ten yards, and I can already see his back end start to come out from under. He turns around some trees, I see him staggering, I see him go down. He didn't go 50 yards. Folks, we just hammered him. Oh my gosh, I tell you what. He didn't go, he didn't go 50 yards. A Grim Reaper put the smack down on him. Folks, it's our first morning in Kansas. It's still, we put a rattling sequence down and it started echoing everywhere. And I wanna tell you what, if we look up there and here comes this buck, he holds up at this fence, but I knew he's interested. And so what I did, I just waited. I didn't do anything, but when every time he started to take a walk or start to move, I'd, I'd hit him with that grunt. It was just enough that, I pulled him over the fence. We got a 32 yard shot, about 30, 32 yard shot right there. I tell you what, it's a good deer. He's down, no, no trailing. We know where he's at. It's a nice Kansas deer. It's November the 2nd here in Kansas. We're hunting with Kansas monster whitetails. Oh man, I tell you what, first day, what do you think? <laughs> good job, good job, baby. All right. Got all my gear down. We just put the smack down on a big Kansas buck. First morning, November 2nd, they're starting a cruise. We tinkle the horns together. This is a great time to do that. Tinkle the horns for a little bit, a couple grunts. He came in, circled. We had him on a rope. He hung up at the fence. The grunt call, he couldn't stand it, jumped over. We put the smack down on him. Let's go get him. Look at that deer. Oh yeah. Look at the tines on that baby. Woo. I tell you what, got that gnarly stuff on him. Nice buck right there. We're in Kansas, November the 2nd. It's our first day here. It's a great time to be here. The deer, the deer are cruising. We call, we rattled this bugger in right here. Oh, man, what an awesome deer. What an awesome deer. Folks, I want to tell you what, Kansas at its best. This is a nice Kansas buck. I tell you, to have the opportunity to take a deer like this with archery equipment is awesome. What a blessing. I tell you, 
We're here in Kansas with Kansas Monster Whitetails, and they really got the great area. They've got an awesome area, and they know what they're doing, folks. Hey, it's bow fishing season, and here at Tribe Archery, we're pumped about getting into the action. Don't have a bow fishing bow? We've got you covered with the Triton Pro. We also have bow fishing kits, bows, strings, arrows, and reels. We've got everything you need to get into extreme bow fishing action. Right here at Tribe Archery. Buckle up and dive in. I'm Heath Painter. Shoot straight and be safe, and we'll see you out on the water.